Good evening, and welcome to the devotional time sponsored by Gilead Lutheran Church of Center Brunswick. I'm Pastor Jeff Silvernail of Gilead. So what we're going to do tonight, for those of you who've been following this, we do a little bit of a prayer service, there's some structure at the beginning and in the end. I'll read some scripture, I'll share a few thoughts, close with a blessing, and a reminder of our upcoming services on Sunday. So what we're using for our devotion our prayer time right now is, it's in the Lutheran Book of Worship, if you have one at home. It's on page 164. It's where it begins, called Response of Prayer 2, also known as Suffrages. It begins with the Lord's Prayer, then the Apostles' Creed, and then there's some prayer dialogue, which uh, if you don't have the LBW, just listen. If you have it, I invite you to join with me in that. Let's begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Tonight I'm going to be reading a few verses from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. This is actually our Gospel reading for this Sunday. So you get a little head start on uh, thinking about it. And uh, so I invite, you to, I invite you to listen. Beginning, 10th chapter, beginning in verse 40. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does it feel like to be welcomed? You see some genuine smiles. You receive the invitation to maybe get comfortable. You're assured that what you have to say will be listened to. And when that happens, how does it feel? It feels warm, comforting, safe. But what about when you aren't welcomed? You know, the Plastic smiles, if there are any smiles at all. No direction to offer you comfort or relaxation. Your comments are brushed off, deflected, or just outright ignored. No one cares who you are, or what you think, or what you need, or what you want. And when that happens, how does it feel? feels cold, doesn't it? You know, churches struggle with welcome. 
Every congregation says that they're friendly, and I'm sure they all are, at least, you know, to each other, the ones they know. But I can tell you there is a wide range in how friendly it feels to an outsider who happens to be visiting. Hospitality, welcoming, has been a focus in my two long-term pastoral calls. It all started as when I was an intern coming out of seminary, and interns have to have a project, they have to develop a project, and what I developed is a program called Undercover Greeters, which basically was just training people how to do some low-key, low-pressure welcoming and hospitality. In both of my calls, the folks learned it. And it became a part of the DNA of the congregation, so we didn't even have to think about it after a while. And as we got better at it, everyone who entered got at least a measure of genuine welcome. Well, we are in different times now. We can't welcome those who come in right now because, well, no one can come in to our sanctuaries. Instead, we are the church in the world, worshiping visibly in the parking lot, meeting those who need food outside of our walls. You know, for the last 20 plus years, I've been hearing about how the church needs to get outside of the walls. Well, maybe this is what we needed to make that happen. Not just in the parking lot, but to be church in the world, active, engaged, caring, loving, and serving. You know, actually in this passage that I read, Jesus didn't tell us to welcome folks. He said, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. We carry the presence of Jesus everywhere we go. In being present, outside the walls, we give people a chance to welcome Jesus. And then those who come to us, well, you know what? They bring Jesus too. You see, welcome, it's a two-way street. And Jesus is going in both directions. Amen. We continue now with the prayer for the evening. And then I'll give a blessing and I will make an announcement at the end before I say goodnight. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have this day so graciously protected us. We beg you to forgive us all our sins and the wrong which we have done. By your great mercy, defend us from all the perils and dangers of this night. Into your hands we commend our bodies and our souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And remember, friends, that our worship this Sunday will once again be a drive-in service. It will be starting at 1030 this Sunday morning. This is the last service for the summer that starts at 1030. So 1030 this Sunday, and then beginning Sunday, July 5th, we will have the drive-in services at 930. Take care, and God bless. Good night.